Today, we're going to be breaking down the six big areas of CS2 investing and starting it off here with the active duty cases. Now, if you're not familiar with the active duty cases, we just got a brand new case, the Kilowatt case, and that is now in the active duty cases. It makes up these five cases right here, and all of these cases are actively dropping. That means when you go ahead and you level up your weekly drop, you've got a 99% chance to go ahead and get one of these cases. This is extremely important because that means the supply on these cases is absolutely massive. Now, when we're talking about it from an investment point of view, we can look at the Snakebite case was the case that got removed from the active of duty pool when the kilowatt case came in. And what we see is a very interesting development because obviously people think the snake bite case would just explode in price. Now it's got no more supply coming in, relatively speaking, it's still making up 1% of the drop pool. But the truth is, it's just got a massive supply and that's going to hamper the growth of the snake bite case and every other active duty case that comes out of the active duty pool for a significant amount of time. Talking about the active duty cases, they're a very okay long term investment, but there's a lot better opportunities inside of this video. Skin Swap is today's sponsor and they're also sponsoring you with a free bonus for signing up with the first link in the description. They're the premier place for CSGO and Rust skins with a massive trading site and a top of the line marketplace, offering you the most competitive rates out there and a massive 40% bonus when you're using that link in the description. Combine that with their top of the line selling feature with many payout options and their trading feature legitimately taking you just about a minute and there's no reason not to sign up with that first link in the description. The next big area is going to be major capsules. Now there's a lot of major capsules out there. A heck of a lot of major capsules out there, but we're going to break it down into two big groups. We've got the Copenhagen and Paris capsules, and then we've got all the older capsules. So if we want to talk about all the older capsules, that's Stockholm, Antwerp, and everything all the way back. Basically with these ones, they're going to be a relatively safe investment, but they're going to be extremely expensive compared to the newer capsules. Every capsule was sold at 25 cents, but the truth is the ones that have had time to develop have gotten extremely expensive. You can see that with Stockholm and Antwerp. Now talking about Paris and Copenhagen, it's a little bit of a different story. If you're an investor, you're probably going to want to look in this area just because it's going to have a lot more risk, but a lot more potential reward, and that's exactly what we're after. Talking about Paris specifically, we have a lot of numbers to back this up. We know that Paris was a very over-invested into major, however, we also know that the demand was there for opening up these Paris capsules. A lot of Paris capsules have been opened. Now, for me personally, I do still think there is a lot of potential with the Paris capsules. It's just going to take a long time to develop, and a lot of people aren't willing to wait out that time. Obviously, make your own investment decisions, but when we're talking about Copenhagen, this is going to be most likely one of the biggest impacts for the Paris capsules. That's because three out of the past four capsules that have been released have contained borderless stickers, and we're seeing a lot of fatigue in the market because of these borderless stickers. Therefore, Copenhagen is going to be very interesting to see because it's probably going to have a pretty detrimental impact to Paris if we see borderless stickers once again. Now, you can also go ahead and make an investment into these stickers specifically. If you want to look at Antwerp, some of the best performing investments from the overall Antwerp were actually the Antwerp hollows. That's because they were extremely cheap and extremely underinvested into, and because the demand was concentrated for a lot of these stickers, we saw a significant increase in price compared to even the capsules, which did see some pretty nice growth. Now, honestly, it's not going to happen like that every time. Actually, a lot of the time, you're usually going to be outperformed or equally performed by the capsule, so it's not going to be the best interest every time. However, it definitely comes down to the specific stickers. Now, when you're making an investment like this, I'm going to be completely honest. It is usually significantly more risky than what you're going to get with the normal capsule, because the normal capsule has all of the stickers inside of it, and just a couple of them go up, the capsule is probably going to move in value, but you're investing into those specific stickers, so if your sticker doesn't move in price, you're going to be out of luck. Now, when we're talking about major sticker investments, there's one big thing you want to pay attention to, and that's going to be the fact that if it has a borderless alternative or not. See, when we look at a lot of stickers, they might have one borderless sticker, or they might have three borderless stickers. Usually, the ones that have one borderless sticker tend to outperform the ones with three, because all of the demand is going to be concentrated on that one specific sticker. Please keep in mind that if something meets this one specific piece of quota, that doesn't guarantee it's going to be a good investment, but it's a really good indicator to start looking for your potential sticker investments inside of this area because the truth is usually it ends up being more correct than it is wrong, but it's obviously not guaranteed by any means. And keep in mind that we have tons of data out there that helps you make these decisions. Specifically, one of the ones here is going to be the sticker application numbers. Very easy to find and very useful in your decision making process. Now, rare cases are my favorite thing to talk about. If we want to look at the past year, we have seen such significant amount of growth inside of this area for a couple big reasons. First up, if we want to talk about the supply, it's only decreasing. That's because they make up 1% of the drop pool, as we mentioned earlier, and we have seen 20 some million cases cases unboxed in the past month, and about 40% of those on average are going to be rare cases. Therefore, we're seeing a huge decrease for so many of these cases, which leaves such a big opportunity for such a large amount of profit. Now, the biggest thing that comes down to when we're talking about these rare cases is the unboxing numbers. We mentioned 20 million cases in the past month and over a million in the past day, but the truth is you got to make sure you're still buying cases that are heavily demanded. A lot of these cases are going to be your cheaper rare cases, your Prisma 1, your Prisma 2, your Danger Zone, and a lot of these cases that have consistent demand are usually 
going to be some of the ones that perform the best. Obviously, you can still look to some of those more expensive cases, those ones like your Wildfire, your Chroma 3, your Revolver. Those ones are also still very good investments because they have a little bit of a lower supply, but they still have a really decent amount of demand relative to the supply. Now, when we're talking about rare cases, these are the number one area I suggest to the most amount of people because it's really hard to screw it up. All you have to do is buy some of the most demanded cases, throw them away for a while, and you're going to be in a very likely position to go ahead and make some of that profit we have recently shown as being a massive amount, especially in the past year. Now, obviously nothing is guaranteed, but rare cases are the number one area in my personal opinion. If you're not too deep into CS2 investing, it's a perfect area to get into. Now, when we're talking about the skins market, it's a very interesting area. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend investing into it unless you really know what you're doing, but a lot of people look at play skins and they see how they have appreciated over time and they look at that as an investment. That is an option. However, I'm going to be very careful in wording this when I say that it is kind of dependent on the player count. Obviously not fully, but relatively speaking, as more people come into the game, if there's a limited amount of skins, they're probably going to increase in price. The biggest area for profit when it comes to skins is going to be operation skins. Now, operations are going to be the number one most opportune time to make a very strong investment into Counter-Strike. That's because of this right here. This is the Operation Riptide shop. Everything on this page has increased significantly in price since Riptide has ended up until today. And it's not just with Riptide. Every past operation as well, we have seen such a massive amount of profit and specifically a couple big areas. First up, we see these stickers are a very profitable area because usually there's a couple really demanded stickers that aren't noticed until afterwards. The supply on these is super low and therefore the price starts to increase rather quickly. Also look at the operation skins. Operation skins are usually ones that have a finite amount so no more can actually be created but the demand on these is relatively high so people have put them into trade-ups and we see the price of them start to go absolutely ballistic. We see five, six, seven hundred percent growth over the span of a year or a little bit more of time and it's not too uncommon for the past operations. And finally we just have nearly everything in the shop because all of these items are completely supplied cap. We're talking about the patches have ended up being very profitable because very few people bought them. We look at the operation agents. Same exact story here. There was not a ton of demand for them during the overall operation. Once it ended, there was a relatively speaking lower supply and therefore they ended up being really good investments and going up in price. As with all of these investments, nothing is guaranteed by any means, but an operation is one of the most profitable times to be an investor and I would highly suggest at least looking into it if you're in that position. And finally, we got the extras, which are three big things that didn't make the list. First up, agents overall. Right now, agents overall are extremely inflated in price in my personal opinion, and therefore I don't think it would make a strong investment, at least in the current market. Second going to be souvenir packages. Souvenir packages, relatively speaking, have zero demand once their respective major finishes, and usually it's the same collections over and over after every major. It's not a great investment because they're going to have zero demand. And the last one is going to be hype items. These are items that go up very quickly because of maybe something changed or maybe anything changed for these specific items. I don't think it's a good investment. Usually they drop right back down for the significant amount of items, but that's all I got. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day.